I hear that Power of God Season 2 and Blue Lock actually is not competing for Best PNG Animation of the Year. It's actually Uzumaki. Now, Mr. Anime Man or Joey has something to say. Let's hear what he has to say. So I just finished watching the Uzumaki anime adaptation. Okay. How was it? <sighs> Look, you guys have read the title. Um, I'm just going to get straight to the point. What was the title? Literally, <laughs> it's just an intro. Um, it sucked. And yeah. I really, really wish this was the one that didn't suck. So if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, let me get you guys up to speed. There is a legendary manga, a horror Junjito. manga called Uzumaki. Now this is, I would say, probably one of the most well-known Mahara manga in the really? modern day. Uh, it is created by none other than the father of horror manga, Ito Junji. I am a personal massive fan of all of his works. I own almost every single one of his works physically. Glaze. In form. And uh, Uzumaki is definitely up there as one of my favorite short stories that he has created, or I guess long stories if you think about it in the catalog of Junji Ito. And back in 2019 at Crunchyroll Expo, they announced that they were finally going to make a Uzumaki anime adaptation. Now, at this point, I'm not completely sure how the timelines match up, but I heard that the failure for this project was because due to the limited amount of resources, but they didn't even have a finished product and they announced it. Basically, episode one looked good. Two and three had like nothing and four, I heard had a little bit more, but it wasn't enough. And the team was forced upon a hand because of this early green light without finishing the project where now the expectations for the audience is so high that we either just let them down by canceling it or give them basically an unfinished product. Which a lot of Junji Ito fans and just a lot of anime fans in general were very, very hyped about. I was hyped as hell when I especially saw the first trailer of it because unlike all of the other Junji Ito adaptations that have, let's be real, have all been really crap. This one looked so promising. Unlike all of the other Junji Ito anime adaptations, they- And now, this is just like every other Junji Ito animation. They just went completely one-to-one -one with Ito Junji's very distinct art style, even so much as making it black and white, just like the manga. Which, you know, wow. a lot of people have said, including myself, have echoed this point, that that was one of the biggest problems with Ito Junji's anime adaptations, is black that the moment you add color to any of his stuff, it immediately decreases the spooky factor by about uh, 10 to 20 times or so. So clearly okay. production IG USA, Adult Swim, and their in-house production team William Street heard all of those cries from... I mean, bro, it's not even like, sir, it's the cries from the audience, but just being limited to black and white, I'm sure that like offloads quite a lot of resources, right? Like, black and white? Sounds like less work. Isn't this like a great thing where the studio can now even make a better product because it's less pressure? But how do they fuck this up? The Ito Junji fans and went, hey, you know what? Let's just turn it black and white. Let's go as one-to-one -one with the art style as possible with this Uzumaki adaptation. Great. There is so much at stake here because this is one of the most beloved horror manga in today's industry. So we really have to make sure we don't do another terrible Junji Ito adaptation. Psych. Spoiler alert, they did. Oh my god, what an insane downfall this is. Like, this this, this fall off needs to be studied, my boys. So, I literally just finished watching the last episode uh, today because it came out this morning. Uh, mind you, there was only four episodes of this, so it's very easy to digest. Like, you can- That's another thing, right? Like, not only, like, were they just limited to black and white, which I think would probably make it a lot simpler and easy for the studio to work on. And it's only four episodes too, but despite that, there was a mismanagement of just like this project where they could only give such mid content. Why? Because they thought that they could just simply get away with plastering Junji Ito's name on it while putting the least amount of money to just like fill their pockets and run away with it. You can watch this whole thing in like a, a matter of hours. And you know, I talked about it very, very briefly in a Trash Taste episode, I believe. At that point, I had only watched the first episode of Uzumaki. I and first was pretty I think good. I can speak on behalf of everybody when they say that they really had us in the first half. Or I guess Cat in this fished. case, they had us in the first quarter. Because Cat fished, man. Never trust the first episode of anything. They'll always give the best. 
They'll front load that shit to hook you in. Then they'll show the true nature. And by then you'll be probably like, oh, but look at episode one. They can do great. Cope. Hope. And then we watch the rest of the season. And it never gets better. Because my god, episode one was just everything we were hoping for. At least in terms of the visual aspect. It was everything that we wanted in a Junji Ito anime adaptation. The animation was so precise and so fluid and so much like character to all of the movements and the different animation work even though the entire thing is in black and white. So with this pristine animation as thanks to Production IG USA and William Street Productions we managed to get a very convincing first episode. Catfish. And then everything started going downhill from episode two. In fact, I would go as far as to say that episode one was genuinely like pretty good. Like if I had to rate the episode, if I had to rate point episode something. episode, episode one, I would probably give it like a good, maybe like seven or eight out of 10. Uh, it wasn't a perfect episode and I'll get to that later in the video. But then episode two onwards literally dropped to like a, a, a two or a three out of 10 if I would have put it on any new Bro, I have never given a score below 5, because I just don't think a score below 5 could possibly exist, but it's that bad. 2 or 3 out of 10? Miracle scale. Because my god, what the hell happened to the animation? I mean, if you guys have been on like Twitter or any kind I've of social clips. media, you probably saw so many memes coming yeah. out of especially- uh, Basically, there's like, you know, this scene of something falling down like a hole, and it's just PNG. It, it, look at me. And it's basically like, ooh. That, that's, that's the clip I saw, and I was like, there's no way this is real. Especially episode two, because it truly was hilarious. And you know, there are times when Junji Ito's works are hilarious. Um, the contents of episode two, however, in context of the story of Uzumaki, definitely not that. I mean, it really is true when people were comparing, especially episode two's art change to, uh, <laughs> some people were saying it looks like they just took the game facade and turned it in black and white. I'm sorry <laughs> if that's the first time you're seeing this meme because you're never going to be able to unsee I it. Am. The scene where the kids are running Thank you, across Mom, the, for the prime. is probably the worst animation I've seen in a very, very long time. And it's just even more obvious, especially when it came right after episode one. But I would like to throw a little bit of a curveball okay. in my review of the Uzumaki anime and not just go on for the next 10-15 minutes shitting on the crappy animation because obviously it goes without saying that's what all the memes were all about. Now, if I want to talk about what happened behind the scenes, right? I want to talk about exactly how the project management was, how much resources they had, who were the key people involved in this project, why was it mismanaged, why did episode 1 look so good, but then episode 2, 3, 4 look bad? If anything, I would like to argue that the biggest problem with this Uzumaki adaptation didn't start from episode 2. It was there from episode one in spades okay. people who produced this anime directed this anime i don't know whoever was responsible for this anime adaptation just missed one crucial thing what? that could have made this anime actually scary you might have noticed this if you had watched all four episodes but the first thing that i pointed out at least in my analysis when even watching episode one was me saying to myself damn they're really like flying through this plot yes they did Pacing. nail the the visual the direction. side of junji ito's very distinct art style but they didn't let it fester they didn't let it build in any pacing is the issue directing is the issue episode one it looked good but due to the sudden abrupt change of when it goes from building up the tension and then the pop off it was kind of already there anyway everything just felt really really rushed because one thing that makes junji ito's manga especially so impactful and so creepy and spooky mm. is that with manga you can read it at your own pace you can True. stay on a particular panel for as long as you'd like while you admire the amazingly talented art style that is set before i mean you can kind of do that with anime too right right now i'm pausing and admiring joey's facial hair but obviously in an anime, no one watches like that. It's, it, I'm just the only one pausing and just observing everything because, you know, I want to get everything out of it. But most people, they're not going to pause, right? They're going to let it play one pass through. For you, and especially in the case with Junji Ito, where a lot of his horror is 
very, very visual because it deals in things like body dysmorphia and macabre horror, which is very heavenly dependent on the visual side of things. With a manga, you can let it sit there. You can let it fester. You can let the atmosphere build up. Mm. But when you try and convert that to an anime side of things, because anime do. is limited to how much time you have per episode. And if you only have a limited number of episodes you need to make, in this case, four, four episodes, which really isn't a lot of time if you think about it, then you don't really give yourself enough room to build up that atmosphere. You don't give yourself enough time to really let the atmosphere cook into you're not edging to get the best climax you can you skip the foreplay and you jump and you nut but it's like it's one of those nuts where you're like what was the point of this you know it's 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 premature it's what what the fuck i feel like i wasted my time to the minds of the viewers. You can show one scary thing that is happening in the anime with all of the sound effects and the voice acting and the animation and the music. You can add all of that, but if you don't give people enough time to not only let it sink in to what they are seeing and what they are experiencing the and immersion. give them enough time to prepare them for the reveal, then it doesn't really end up being scary. It just kind of feels like a really cheap jump scare. Because another genius thing that makes Ito Junji's manga especially so good, in my opinion, is that he is the absolute master at what we call the page turn. Essentially, he takes two pages that you are currently reading right now to build up to some kind of... Ah, uh, and then the next page you turn, it's just like this horrific full page cover art that just like shocks you. Reveal, and then when you flip the page, it is usually <gasps> the first thing that you see. The terrible body horror, dysmorphia, macabre horror that Junji Ito is so good at just pops out when you flip the page, and that's what gives you the heebie-jeebies when you're reading <laughs> Heebie-jeebies! Again, it's very difficult to replicate that page turn feel when you're so rushed with timing and i seriously have no idea why they decided to only do four episodes because consider i feel like it's just corporate greed right it's just again just corporate suits that don't respect art that see something popular that just wants to get a quick crash cash grab only seeing the tree in front of them without thinking about the forest it's just that again isn't it Considering how much they were rushing through and just blatantly cutting out some bits from the manga, I honestly think if they had taken the time again to build up that atmosphere, build up that creepiness, then I think they could have easily done six, maybe even like 10 or so episodes. But that means paying them more money. That means that rather than the producers and the committee, you know, staff just pocketing everything, some of that money has to go towards more animation time. And why would you want that? No. They're frothing at the mouth at thinking of how do we min-max this as much as possible. Six episodes? Nah, make it four. Nah, make it three. Although, yes, it is based on a relatively short story. I mean, in the manga, Uzumaki is only about two volumes worth, if you think about it, which is not a lot of time, but... Again, if you, the production decided to really take the time to build up that atmosphere and believe in the viewer's patience to stick around with that atmosphere, then I think it could have ended up becoming a lot more of a creepy experience to watch yeah. rather than just something that people are just laughing and joking about now because, again, we, we had so much potential. They took, what, like what? It was like six or seven years to produce this damn thing? And... What? Six, seven years for a four episode season where three out of four is just garbage? What? This is more mismanaged than Concord. Look, I completely understand the whole thing. Apparently, the director was saying that there was some like massive production issues during the whole what? thing that basically gave themselves this ultimatum of like, well, we either release it as is or don't release it at all. What? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about earlier on, right? Basically, I, I read some sort of tweet explaining what might be going on and, you know, they green they basically marketed and advertised it even though they didn't finish it. They had limited resources. Half of them were thinking, no, we can't even fucking push this up. But now that you've let people know that Uzumaki is coming out, are we going to let the fans down by canceling the project? Or are we going to let the fans down by giving them a mid product? We got the latter. Well, you know, I'm just going to say 
maybe you should have kept it in the drafts, bro. Because I think this is just further mm -hmm. proven to Junji Ito fans that um, we're never going to get a good anime adaptation. If I was Junji Ito, I would make a public statement just like crucifying all these motherfuckers that's behind all these mid-adaptations. Imagine being one of the most iconic legendary mangaka, right? In such a specific you know, niche for horror. And this is it. it like, his, none of his anime has ever done well? What the fuck is happening? Is someone, like, is this a personal vendetta? Are they going after him? Is there someone in the anime production committee, like, industry that's just like, fuck Junji Ito in specific? It's just not gonna happen. If, if they fucked it up with this one, where everything was lined up perfectly, and then they fumbled the bag in such an embarrassing way, I just don't see how they can recover from that, to be honest. Like, how do you, how do you try to, where do you, where do you go from there? Like, look, I completely understand that when you read the Uzumaki manga, it is pretty ridiculous. And the, the you know, like a lot of Junji Ito stories, the story and the themes and everything is very open-ended. It's supposed to not make all that much sense because it relies on the absolutely absurd visuals with the creepy atmosphere that it portrays itself in in the manga. Don't get me wrong, you nailed the visuals. At least in episode one, you were really nailing the visuals, but you completely the missed the bag on the creepy atmosphere. You can't make one, just one of them work. You need to make both of them work because otherwise you end up with Yes, visually a very one-to-one -one, uh, representation of Junji Ito's, again, distinct manga art style, but you don't have any kind of atmosphere or pressure to build up to with these visuals. Again, you just end up having a, a, a black and white... Does anyone know this? Are you guys such young kids that you don't even know what this... I've never seen this shit, to be honest. I'm not that young myself, but like, what the fuck is this facade? Is this some... Boomer memes? What? What? It's an old game? What is this shit? It's a PS1? Facade looking animation, which it just now looks hilarious in retrospect. So yeah, um, that was my, I guess, review of the Uzumaki manga. Bottom line, um, man, we, we, we just can't get a W. All I wanted was for- Well, if there's anything, if you want to have any solace in this, don't feel bad, Joey. It's not that- Horror manga is not getting able to get an anime adaptation. No, no, no. Or even if it gets an anime adaptation, that it's bad. No. Sports. Isekai. Every genre. It's, it's not specific to a genre. This is a common theme repeating itself all over the place. Corporate greed getting in the way, right? Anytime you have art and there's money to be made from it in the beginning, maybe it's going to be a passion project where people don't care about the profits but want to make sure that you create the best product possible. And most oftentimes when you do that, for example, Friden, right? Just a common example of a recent one where one single good anime with just love poured into it will have more impact than 30 shitty isekai fantasy slop that Kadokawa puts out on a monthly basis, right? If only they could just think about the long term and really just invest. But most people don't want to go through that. It might be a risk for them. And maybe it's in their best interest to go for the short-term gains of min-maxing, giving the least amount that the series deserves to pickpocket their, you know, wallets. Basically, they're just... They're basically just embezzling all the funds, right? And the animators don't even get paid. The fucking commission, uh, the producer committee gets to, you know, fatten up their wallets and they sail off into the fucking sunset, not ever giving a fuck about the animes that were even being adapted. Just sad. I feel like there should be a law for like, if you want to be in the production committee stage, you have to be a hardcore weeb. But unfortunately, hardcore weebs are just being neat and watching anime with me on YouTube. Wah, wah. This to be just even like decent. You know, because when you compare it to, like, say, the Junji Ito collection or the, Gyo, God forbid, the Gyo movie, if any of you guys have seen that Ew. before, if you have seen it, then uh, respect to you, my brother. We, we fought through that war. Like, compared to his older works, uh, you know, this is, I guess, in some respect, better, but it's really not that much of an improvement. That's actually so sad that Uzumaki is better than those two before. Like... <laughs> We're just talking about a failure of an anime adaptation. And then he brings up two extra ones which were even worse. Like, what did Junji Ito do to the commission, like the production committee?
Why are they ousting him like this? Is this a coincidence? But this many, you know, dots in the graph? If it was a single dot in the graph, it doesn't make any sense. But now we have multiple dots in the graph. You're starting to make a line. There's a pattern of behavior here. I would honestly even argue that in terms of the building up of atmosphere, the Junji Ito collection adaptation might have actually done it better than the Uzumaki anime. But again, you can't make one work and the other one not work. You need both of them to work out. That's what makes Junji Ito's manga Junji Ito manga. That's what makes his stuff so prominent in the manga industry. That's what Maybe it's impossible to adapt his manga shock and the experience in the anime format. Or maybe that's just a lazy excuse used to cover up what's going on with Junji to anime adaptations. Makes his work so unique and loved by so many people who have read his works. And if anything now, this Uzumaki anime has just, I think, proved to me and every Junji Ito fan out there that, you know what, maybe, maybe we shouldn't give it another go. Maybe That's what you're saying now? The next time a new, you know, a trailer comes out, a new news saying like, yo, Junji Ito's latest work is going to get adapted. Cope. Hope. Always expect the worst. But that doesn't mean that you should never hope for the best. Maybe we should just leave it with the manga. That was my review. Uh, if you guys have seen the Uzumaki anime, let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments below. How do you think they could have improved it? What did you like about it? What did you dislike about it? I like the memes. I haven't personally seen Uzumaki. I already knew that horror genre is going to do terrible on my channel in terms of the YouTube reaction stuff. But beyond that, I thought that, oh, you know, Junji Ito, this is, a, this is a fucking huge name. Surely they wouldn't fuck this up. They did. And I'm like, damn, Tower of God and Blue Lock actually aren't the worst out of the season? No, it might actually be Uzumaki. But hey, you know, when things are going to shit, at the very least, the community has a lot of memes to have fun with. But here's a link to Joey's video. Please go give it a like. Here's a link. And I'll see you next time.